Hello, everybody. This is uh, Ron Dittmars talking to you from the Erasmus Academy Recording Studios. And uh, this is the beginning of a session on, or, or five segments on Vermeer, the, the Dutch painter, the well, well known and beloved Dutch painter. And hopefully, you see on the screen the image of, of the picture that's, that, that the description is going to be about. And today, our, our uh, guest speaker is uh, Chad. Chad, you want to say hello and introduce yourself? Sure, Ron. Yeah, my name is Chad Hauck. Um, I am a doctoral student in church music at Baylor University in Waco, Texas. Uh, I'm doing an emphasis in music composition. Uh, and I started my studies with the Erasmus Academy this last summer because I had to finish a German proficiency exam and enjoyed working with Ron. And he's graciously asked me to come back and be part of this daily portion. Okay, great. So uh, at the beginning of each of these segments, I'll show you the, the colored picture that you see on the screen now, and then, then we'll go to the text itself. But uh, the next segment on Tuesday, you'll see this again, so you can have some reference to it. Okay, so let's see. Um, okay, so here we're going to go to the text. All right, can you see that on the screen? Yes. Great. So this is just the, the listing of the of the painting itself, the description, as you see, uh, number 32, uh, Johannes Vermeer, uh, actually Jan van der Meer, born in 1632 in Delft and died in 1675. And then the, the title of the painting, Das Gästchen, which means a little alley. And then you see the in, in Dutch there, Het Stretje, or however you pronounce that for, the, for you Dutch experts. Uh, signed and then um, Entstanden, which uh, came about in in 1658, oil oil of Leinwand, which means uh, oil on canvas, and then from this aus der Sammlung, which from the collection of six, Amsterdam, and then Erwarben acquired in 1921 by from Sir Henry uh, de Terding uh, for the Rijksmuseum. Okay, just a little uh, background information about the painting itself. So uh, our procedure, which you uh, probably know by now, is I'm going to be reading the sentence out loud, uh, and then um, uh, Chad will repeat after me, and as he does, please repeat with him so you get a sense of the flow of the sentence, the sound, and the pronunciation of the words. And then I'll ask him uh, specific questions about the structure of the sentence uh, so that we can piece together actually how the, the sentence is built and what its meaning is. And as I do so, you can also um, uh, please ask yourselves in your own imagination uh, the same questions. Um, actually, uh, this is actually a, a quite a good text uh, and very almost ideal as a proficiency exam for graduate students in art history. It's on the level that you would expect in a proficiency exam. So, one method also could be since we since uh, the whole text is, is available to you before we start the sessions, is to actually translate the whole passage and then hear how it's um, translated step by step through the week. <laughs> Um, okay, so here we go. Let's read out loud, uh, starting from the beginning. Is that okay? Are you ready, uh, Chad? Yes, sir. Okay, here we go. Johannes Vermeer, der in Delft geboren worden ist, und, go ahead. Johannes Vermeer, der in Delft geboren worden ist, und, so weit bisher festgestellt werden konnte, so weit bisher festgestellt werden konnte, sein ganzes Leben in dieser Stadt verbracht hat. Sein ganzes Leben in dieser Stadt verbracht hat. Can you see my marks here on the, on the side? Yes. Good. So the, the whole sentence goes all the way down to here, and we're going to have to identify where the main clause is in the main verb complex. But up to this point, you we're just going to go up to this point only right there. Um, okay. So starting out, um, what is this dare? What is this serving as? It's a relative it? pronoun going back to Vermeer. Good. So it's a relative pronoun, and its antecedent is Vermeer, and its form is determined by is has three determinants: the gender and number of its antecedent, and also the role that it plays in the relative clause. Here it happens to play as a role. Its role is the subject, who geboren uh, worden ist, who has been, and then this is a past participle serving as a um, predicate adjective, who was born simply in Delft. And, and then where's the verb complex up to here, up to the comma, uh, Chad? Uh, I think it's festgestellt werden konnte. Festgestellt means to determine. So, uh, who in who was born in Delft, and to the extent so weit, um, it you have to supply was able to be determined 
uh, up to this point, you can put that in whatever order you feel is best fits the English. And then go on. Uh, let's read together. Sein ganzes Leben in dieser Stadt verbracht hat. You, you read that already. So where's the verb complex in that little uh, clause? Uh, verbracht hat. Good. He has passed or he has spent his his entire life. So here's the direct object, which we identify or uh, with a circle. This is supposed to be a circle. Uh, what gender is Leben and how can you tell? Uh, well, it is, um, it's neuter because, mostly because of its function, I guess, but also because of the form of the uh, modifiers before it. Exactly, yeah. Both these possess, possessive pronoun, his, consist Leben. If this were um, a masculine noun, it would be seinen as a direct object. If it were feminine, mm -hmm. it would be seine with the adjective ending uh, different as well. Okay, what about this case in, in dieser Stadt? What case is that in? Feminine. That's a feminine noun, and it's it's uh, in the dative case, which we identify oh, with, with carrots. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. Um, let's see. Okay, so we've got that so far. We, uh, who had, who has, who passed his entire life or spent his entire life in this city, Delft? Then uh, going on, wurde nicht allein wie meist in seinen Bildern. Everybody. Wurde nicht allein wie meist in seinen Bildern. Von unbewegten Figuren im Innern eines Raumes. Von unbewegten Figuren im Innern eines Raumes. Good. Now, when you see Würde by itself, this must be part of the main verb. Um, um, Würde. But what goes with Würde? Looking at scanning the whole sentence, if you can tell that. What? Uh, is it uh, gefesselt? Exactly, all the way down here. So this is a long sentence, and this is where the main verb is, main, main verb complex. Fesselt means to uh, captivate. Um, so he, uh, it was, um, or he was captivated. So here's your, if, and if, if I were to ask you the core sentence, you would just say, Johannes Vermeer wurde gefesselt. That, that's it. That's your core sentence, and everything else sort of hangs on that or is de dependent upon that. Okay. Um, who spent his whole life in, in the city, in this city, was not a lot alone. And really, since you now have the verb complex, you can probably bring this up ahead as, as we normally do in English. Was mm -hmm. captivated not only, and then go on, wie meist in seinen Bildern. And, and this is uh, an adverb, mostly as mostly in his paintings or his pictures. He was mm -hmm. not captivated. And then let's go on. Von unbewegten Figuren. Um, now, captivated by, so fun, you have two funs here, from here down to here. So the sentence is going to talk about how he was captivated or not captivated by one thing or another. Um, mm -hmm. Not captivated by, un. this means unmoved figures, I, I would say by figures standing still. And then this is it. What is the M a contraction for, Chad? M in dame. Good. In the interior, you would say. And then what gender is, uh, what, what case is this? Eines Raumes? Uh, it, um, oh boy. Um, the, it's a genitive. So what we call the genitive. And here you have. Oh, a, yes, gender case. I remember, did remember the. Uh, remember that the genitive masculine. case, if it's masculine or neuter, adds an S mm -hmm. or an ES. And you mm -hmm. can't tack an S onto an, an, a consonant, which is M. So you have an ES here. So this means of a room. So um, he was not he was not captivated by by figures um, standing still in the interior of a room, you know, as, as, as mostly in his pictures, very well known, obviously. But also, um, and go on to translate the rest of that, but also. Yeah, but also by the city of Delft itself. Great, great. So uh, you want to, Take um take a scan through the whole uh, up to that point and go very slowly and maybe we can follow along with you. Just sure, translating the whole thing. Yeah. Okay. Um, Johannes Vermeer or Jan Vermeer, um, who was born in Delft, mm -hmm. and uh, to the extent to which up to now it was able to. Be determined. Mm -hmm. um, let's see. Spent his entire life in this city. Mm -hmm. uh, picking up the verb, I guess. Was not only captivated, 
as mostly in his pictures uh, by still standing fair or unmoved figures in the interior of a room, uh, but also by the city of Delft itself. Great. Good job. Okay. That's a long sentence. Okay. Good job. Yeah. Let's go on. Von seinen drei Stadtbildern, everybody. Von seinen drei Stadtbildern. Die dokumentarisch erwähnt werden. Die dokumentarisch erwähnt werden. Okay, let's go up to there. So, um, let's see. Um, okay, so this is obviously not the main clause because it's start. It's a par uh, participial phrase or prepositional phrase. Okay, Fr from his three uh, pictures of the city, and you remember, you always sometimes you you for divide words uh, and starting from the second word and 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 adding then the first city, the pictures of the city, which. Mm -hmm which are mentioned um and this is a uh without an ending this is an adverb here which are mentioned in documents okay mm. then let's go on sind heute drei bekannt sorry sind heute zwei bekannt sind heute zwei bekannt okay so there's your core sentence where's the verb sind good which means which that means uh, they are. They are. Thank you for giving a, a pronoun. They are. My pleasure. And, <laughs> and what is piquant is a predicate adjective. They are what? Mm -hmm. uh, known or well known. Yeah, they are known. So, and then here is the subject. So, to, since you're looking for a plural subject, this is the plural subject. To today are known, and and then they're going to say, with, namely, let's go on. Und zwar die große Ansicht von Delft. Go ahead. Und zwar die große Ansicht von Delft, die sich jetzt im Moritzhaus in Den Haag befindet. Wow. Die sich jetzt im Moritzhaus in Den Haag befindet. Und das Gästchen. Und das Gästchen. I'm sure neither you or I got the correct pronunciation of this in, in mm. Dutch. <laughs> um, okay. So, um, so am among, among his three... three pictures of cities which are which are mentioned in documents uh, two today are known and indeed uh, and namely the large view of Delft and then what does this D refer back to um, Chad uh, Ansicht good and it's it, this is a feminine noun and antecedent that's why it's D here and this is the subject of this relative clause which which uh, sich befindet is the verb and uh, what do we do with this with a uh, reflexive pronouns, how do we normally handle those in translating? Well, it's best to start by just leaving them uh, translated literally, I think. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. um, finds, finds itself. Yeah, which, which yeah. finds itself. And then, and then is that necessary for the English idiom for what's being expressed? No, it doesn't make too much sense in English. Yeah, so you'd say which, which is located, basically, sich finden, sich befinden. So, which is located now in the Moritz House in Den Haag? And and the little uh, das Gäschen, this, this, this you can just leave it that way because that's the title of the picture. Okay, great job, and uh, thanks so much for joining in and joining us today, and hopefully come back for another session on uh, Vermeer's painting. Take care. Bye bye.